This is the Ryder and Lisa podcast. If you've got an important lesson that you learned this weekend, we want to hear it. Okay, I learned that I already knew Martha Stewart was a boss, but after watching her documentary, it's like, oh yeah, nobody is like Martha Stewart. Ruthless, eh? Almost well, like very cold, but very honest. Yeah. And she's not going to pretend to be someone to please. She's not a people pleaser. Ice in her veins. Too. Ice in her veins, but yeah. in the best way. I mean, she was the first female billionaire. Is she went to right? she went to jail, and, and when I rem, I remember talking about her when she was in jail and thinking like, oh, it's probably really cushy and like she's fine and it's easy. No, like she was in jail, jail, like prison. Yeah. Anyway, if you haven't watched Martha, it's on Netflix now. Definitely worth the watch. I learned some important lessons this weekend as well, okay. and they mainly came from one TikTok account while I was doom scrolling. Oh, don't you love discovering a good account? Higher Up Wellness is his name, and uh, he just talks about fitness and nutrition, and and he's he does it in a very Martha Stewart way. Mm-hmm, just like very to the point. Yes. Listen. No nonsense. Yeah. I follow a girl that's kind of the same thing. She's like... It's not your cortisol levels. It's not the fact that you have hormone imbalance. It's because you're literally consuming more calories than you're burning. That's it. That's why you're not losing weight. And she's like kind of rude. Okay. But I like it. Uh, he had one specific tip that I wanted to share, which is uh, the post-meal 10-minute walk. He said is like the closest thing to a fitness hack that he's discovered. Why is it that? It just helps everything. Your digestion. It helps your different glucose levels and cortisone levels. I don't know. What if, like, I get home from a 10-minute walk and then I'm hungry again because I just did a workout? Well, I don't think a casual 10-minute walk should be seen as a workout. Okay. Maybe that could be one of the issues. But uh, anyway, it seems like a really good tip and it gets your body moving and at the exact right time. So think about it. Uh, some people in the comment section say that they call it their fart walk. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Love a good fart walk. <laughs> Tara wrote in, I learned that you should check the expiry of your registration of your vehicle. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's, that's a, a big hef- ticket. That's a hefty ticket. Yeah. Whoops. Whoopsies. I think we all screw that one up once in a while. Always. Like now that you don't need the sticker on your license plate. Yeah. What? Out used of to sight, be my, out of mind. used to be my reminder yeah. of when I needed to go in. Anyway, good luck, Tara. Sorry about that. Just reading this article here about how young doctors really want a work-life balance and older doctors are saying like, no, that's not how it works if you get into this profession. (laughs) Not what you signed up for. I mean, if you have a parent that was a surgeon or a doctor, how often did you see them? Were you sitting down for a hot meal every night? Most likely not. And it's so funny because I'm reading this story and I totally get it. Of course you want a work-slash-life balance, but can we all agree... That if you have a surgeon that's like, I don't know, performing open heart surgery on you, you kind of want them to be surgery obsessed and never think about anything else. Yeah. Like you don't want them (laughs) to be thinking about the dock they got to take out at their cabin. Yeah. You don't want them to think about like, oh, I can't wait for my shift to be over because, you know, (laughs) I'm going on a blind date tonight. No. Yeah. Focus on the heart. Stay in the zone. (laughs) I grew up uh, in a pretty small town, a thousand people. So there was just one doctor mainly. Right. And, uh. It was wild. Like, it would be Sunday, dislocate your shoulder playing football in the front yard. He'd come moseying into the yep. hospital like, hey, His nice one, dummy. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he was there, like, on call so constantly. So, if you're listening and maybe you've been considering becoming a surgeon, just know you can't have a life outside of it. Sorry. Your transformation into a full-blown Karen is nearly complete. I watched you uh, standing... Looking out on the neighborhood with your hands on your hips just because there were some kids hanging out uh, this weekend. Yeah, I didn't trust them. That's a thing now. Yeah, it is. You're on neighborhood watch. You have to be. What are you going to do, though? Like, you just complain about it. I don't know. Like, get the do- the hound dogs out on the front deck. You're going to release the hounds yeah. at kids. Mm-hmm. I don't that, need to. We have dogs that like to lick themselves on the front deck. They bark a little bit <laughs> for like a couple <laughs> seconds, and then they yawn and go to sleep. But still... Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I am slowly turning into, I don't want to say a boomer, though, because I'm a millennial, but millennials have Karens, too. In fact, Lisa almost made the name as, like, the new old complaining person. Karens are kind of known as Gen X, probably. Right. So we need a new name, and I think Lisa was shortlisted. It was, like, Lisa, Stephanie, Ashley, 
There was a couple Lindsay, more. Lindsay, I think, was on there. Yeah. What ended up winning? I don't remember, but it wasn't Lisa, and that's all that... Whew. Whew, that's all I cared about. I guess we all eventually kind of end up with, like, boomer traits. Yep, 100%. Like, complain about things... People parking on your on the street in front of your house. LED lights behind you on the highway. Why why are we doing that? Yeah, they do get a little bit bright sometimes. Shrinkflation. Oh my gosh, the Nutrigrains now. I have one here. Remember when you were a kid and you would get a Kellogg's Nutrigrain apple cinnamon to be specific, and it was full of that gooey, delicious jam jam inside. Yeah, and it was soft. Now and there's big. just like a, a hint of cinnamon. There's a little. Thin line of it underneath a dry, a dry ass piece of like oats. I don't even know what to tell you. Don't be throwing the Nutrigrain bars around. Now it's crumbled in there too, mm-hmm. making it even worse. See, there's some boomer energy from me. So we want to hear from you. What is your boomer complaint? <laughs> yeah. Do you have something that you're already starting to develop? You find yourself complaining or you're irritated about something? Hit us up. And you just feel a little bit old when you do. And that's fine. Yeah. We're asking you what your boomer energy is. What do you get fired up, twisted up about? Anita says uh, when she has her cruise control going at about 112K on the highway and somebody passes her. She's like, what the hell is going on here? Slow down. You're going to kill someone. Now, earlier I mentioned LED lights on vehicles and Kaylee wrote in saying, oh, my word, the LED lights, Lisa, I'm short. So the lights get me right in the face every time. And I get that. It makes me immediately full of rage Mm -hmm. when I see those lights and they're blinding. What are we doing here? What is the point of this? Uh, Taylor says TV shows are too quiet and the commercials are too loud. Why? (laughs) Okay. I listened to this ASMR podcast. So a very like light voice that's supposed to relax you. And she starts her podcast by saying, thank you for being here. Now, um, we're just going to get into a quick sponsor. Have you heard of Audible? And it's so <laughs> loud. It makes me so mad. I get that she needs to get her bag right. and like make some money. But like, yeah, yeah. can the commercial also be as- ASMR, please? Just like ease into the commercial. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard of Audible? And then get right. it going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, uh, what gets you old man angry, bud? <laughs> it's when the music's too loud at my kids' hockey games. And I'm like, why is it so loud? And then I'm like, oh, wait, I sound pretty old right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're like, what's with the rap music? Yo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or even a swear word will slip out if someone plays it wrong. And I'm like, oh, my God, they played a swear word at the rink. What are they doing? And in the meantime, the coaches are yelling F-bombs like crazy. And I'm worried about a swear word over the microphone, over the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> With the time change, I think this is the easier one to adjust. Yeah, I did find myself around 2 p.m. yesterday being really bored. Like, I got up early, I went to hot yoga, I got a lot of things done throughout the day, and then I was just kind of sitting there. Like, what's next? You're like, is it dinner yet? Yeah, it I feels wish it like it should almost be dinner. Yeah, I'm like, I wish it was three. <laughs> no. <laughs> you wanted to just have an hour go away. I was ready to go to bed, but I thought two <laughs> was a little was too early. Yeah. Yeah, there was a stretch there where I was waiting for the football games to start, and I was like, Ugh, if the time change wouldn't happen, these games would be on already. Yep. But all in all, I'll take it. That extra hour of sleep felt pretty good. Felt so good. I wonder if it's uh, rough on people that you know normally work late, because all of a sudden that just feels extra draggy. You know what yes. I mean? Yes. Absolutely. And anyone that has toddlers or pets, because having a needy pet that's pawing at you for breakfast, like they don't know that there's a time change. They're waking you up at the same time. And like you said, kids, they don't adjust that quick. Like all of a sudden you're getting up an hour before you wanted to and all that. But And then there's the people that have newborns that are up every hour anyway. So they don't even know what day it is, let alone what time it is. Those parents. Do you remember how, like how many clocks you used to have to change? It's so funny that you say that because my nephew slept over a few weekends ago and he's eight years old and he wakes up the next morning. He's like, Auntie, you don't have a clock in your house. I was up like in the night trying to figure out what time it was. I had no idea. Why don't you have a clock? And I was like, that's so true. Why don't we? Because we're so used to just looking at our phones. We just have the microwave and it's kind of hidden. Do we need a clock? I I guess guess. so. Weird, right? But yeah, no, you'd have to change Several clocks in your house. Um, of course, the clock in your vehicle. Mm-hmm. 
you'd leave a few just to confuse you. Check this out. Like sand through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Days of Our Lives has been renewed for its 61st season. What? It uh, will air its 15,000th episode on December 2nd. Are any of the characters from the original pilot? No, there's no way. Well, they probably came back from the dead a couple times or yeah. something, right? I remember that happening in a few of yeah, those yeah. soap operas back it's in like the day. like their ghost yeah, yeah. is still in. <laughs> yeah, you wonder for the 15,000th episode if they'll try to have some cameos. A lot of those people kept their roles for a significant amount of time on that show, mm-hmm. though. Uh, You ever been big into any soap operas? I mean, I would watch Young and the Restless with my mom. I never really knew what was going on, Mm. but we would fold laundry and watch it together back in the day. My sister and I loved Passions. Okay. And I don't think we should have been watching it. No good point. We were quite young, but... It is wild when you see that on TV a lot growing up and you just assume like everybody has affairs. 100%. Hundred percent. Right. And any time that a couple gets in an argument, one of them turns their back to the other person and talks to them <laughs> over their right shoulder. The gift of meat is that an acceptable gift option? Uh, seems like the text line is on board with meat. I don't think there's a single text that's against meat being a gift. So I guess no vegetarians are listening at the moment. Yeah, that would be a really rude <laughs> gift to yeah, get a vegetarian. It would be. You got to know your audience, but. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw a Facebook post and it said about 10 years ago, dad, whoever posted it said, dad started giving us a full cow and a full pig every year for Christmas and said, I'd rather know you're eating well all year than give you something that you'll forget about within a month. Mm. And it's true when you think about how many gifts you've been given and how many you actually use forever. It's pretty rare that you get something that you like you cherish for a long time, right? It's so true. Liz just wrote in, yes, I love this rider. We got a gift of meat, ribeye, sirloins, filet, and bacon-wrapped scallops. It was the best gift ever. See what I'm saying? Even Shannon, I'd take a 12-pack of top dogs any day. (laughs) (laughs) You have discovered a new ick. I wouldn't call it an ick, but it definitely makes me question things. It's when somebody does an appreciation post for their partner. On their birthday, maybe, or just anniversary. anniversary. Or, I mean, I think it's great unless it's all about how the other person does everything. You know, you're the glue that keeps us together. You do everything. It's like, well, what do you do? Do you Swiffer? Do you clean (laughs) a toilet? Do you cook? Do you help? Do you know what I mean? Like, I understand Mm. where they're coming from, but also, what do you bring to the table? I'd like to give a shout out to my beautiful wife for. You know, taking care of the kids and always cleaning the house and, and making dinner every night. And yeah, I, I see what you're saying. And then you're like, well, what does the other person yeah. do? Do you schedule the kids in for a haircut? <laughs> do you Do you think a lot of it is the one partner giving the appreciation post and the, that, that one partner works a ton? Yes, of course. So, of course, I'm like half kidding here, right? The other person who they're praising, you never see them post because they're too busy. Too busy. <laughs> like their schedule is way too full to take time out of their day to do a post. No, I'm just kidding. But I saw a video the other day and it was a dad turning to his wife at an airport. And he said, all right, we're getting on the plane. We're a team, right? This is a team effort. And then somebody stitched it who was an expert in this field and said, there's actually so much strength with couples who act as team as a team rather than one person doing everything and the other person mm. having other jobs. If you work with a team mentality, you actually get through tough situations a lot better in a more positive mood. Do you know what I mean? It's really smart with kids too, like to say, Hey, we're on the same team. Hey, we're we're doing this, this together. Or for this long drive. We're a team, we're a unit. Because mm-hmm. then you like you make them feel like they also have this responsibility and, yeah. they're, and they're proud of it, right? So the team mentality when you're going in to, let's say, Saturday morning, it's time to clean the house. It's like, all right, all hands in. Let's do this. We're a team. We're a team. Yeah, it's pretty smart. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people use this method because I've seen some videos online, too, of just like a mom waking up her kids for school and walking around and giving knuckles. And yeah, saying, yeah. Like, We're a team this morning, right? 
And the kids just seem to be like, yeah, yeah, they buy into it. They do. So maybe try implementing that next time and keep us posted if you've noticed a a positive change. Yeah, the thing you got to worry about is there's like some bad teams out there. Well, a lot of people, like there's no I in team. Well, like Like, the Calgary Flames, that's a team that, ugh. (laughs) Jason Kelsey in the news. Uh, Obviously, Jason and Travis Kelsey have a very popular podcast together. Yeah, they do, and they just won Sexiest Podcasters. Yeah, and then obviously uh, Jason's also all over the TV as like a color commentator, mm-hmm. analysis, uh, anal- analysis, analysis, <laughs> analysis. And then Trav is the host of Are You Smarter Than a yeah, Fifth yeah. Grader or Celebrity? These guys are everywhere. They right are, now. and apparently he's been cast in a bunch of movies that are coming out soon, too. Just really hoping we don't have this uh, too much of them to the point where we get sick of ah, them. I don't fair. want that to happen. Yeah. Uh, the reason that Jason Kelsey made like worldwide news had some saying it was a good thing, and then obviously there's parts of it that uh, that aren't very good. That are unfortunate, yes. So a troll got up in his face while he was walking what looked to be like into a football stadium. Yeah, and hearing the audio of this, of him just trying to walk into a mm. building, sounds so frustrating, annoying, and annoying to be that famous. The amount of people yelling his name, wanting his attention. I would be cranky immediately, I think, if I was that famous and dealing with people. Yeah, even like the people that are being nice are still so obnoxious. Yeah, it's it just, true. It feels like way too many people think that they deserve celebrities' time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. Just because they're a fan or whatever. But like, you don't. He's a busy dude. Let the guy walk. Like, if it looks like he's chatting with fans or whatever, then yeah, maybe you have an opportunity. But like, he's obviously walking away from these people. So anyway, this guy gets in his face. Says some really rude things about his brother. Yeah. And uh, he had had it and turned around and grabbed this guy's phone, which he also had like in Jason Kelsey's face and smashed it on the ground. Yes. Uh, He then used the same homophobic slur that the guy originally called his brother, Mm -hmm. which I'm sure he regrets. Yep. He doesn't seem like that kind of guy to me. I'm I, sure as soon as he said it, because he was full of rage in that moment. Yeah. He was yeah, like, yeah. oh, I screwed up. Because and other people unacceptable. were... Unacceptable. And other people were filming this moment, right? So... And I'm sure there's a public apology coming about that. I hope he doesn't also apologize for the phone, though, because I think that was a good move. I think Mike Tyson once said, social media made y'all way too comfortable disrespecting people and not mm-hmm. getting punched in the face for it. Well, remember that famous... <laughs> clip of McDavid and his fiance at the time trying to load their vehicle with beer for the team and there was a group of people just in their face like basically sitting in their trunk trying to get pictures of them and talking to them off them touching them touching them yeah and they were so kind in that moment to not yell at them or tell them to go away because they knew there was a camera on them yeah they knew that they have an image that they need to have to the I, public eye. I don't know if I would have the restraint. I know. To not throw an elbow <gasps> once in a while. Like I, It just sounds awful. It seems awful to be that famous. To deal with paparazzi, cameras in your face at all times, people yelling things at you to get a rise out of you and get yeah. a reaction. And the gall of this guy to do that to a man who is six foot four and 280. <laughs> yeah. That could literally break him in half. Like what... How do you get that confident that nothing's going to happen to you? Well, and the worst part is, you know that still to this day, it's all he's talking about and he's bragging about it. But it looks like the internet is definitely siding with Jason Kelsey yes. other than him using the the slur. Mm-hmm. Like, the, I don't think there's many arguments out there that are accepting so, that or well, supporting yeah. that, which, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think he will make an apology about that. I, I would expect one soon, probably. But uh, it seemed like the phone smashing was granted, according to the internet. I see so many people that are like, I liked all the tweets of Jason Kelsey smashing that idiot's phone. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see what ends up shaking down. But um, yeah, these uh, these two, Travis and Jason, managed to get themselves in the news. Like, they're two of the biggest celebrities on the planet right now, you they would sure think. sure are, yeah. yeah. Britney Spears just announced she has a jewelry line coming out. Nice. I don't know if... It's true. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I love her so much. Yeah, yeah. But 
Her Instagram is tough to it follow. Is. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting when you see Christina Aguilera, who there was always that rivalry, right? And she is thriving right now. Mm -hmm. And you're like, man, I wish some of the people in Christina's life that oh, were obviously a support system and that helped her get through some of the trickier parts of being a celebrity and one of the biggest in the world. Since she was in the Mickey Mouse Club with Britney. Yeah. I, it's too bad Britney didn't have some of that same support system because it, you know what I mean? It would be nice to see both of them thrive. Yeah. I would love to get access to Britney's house to just go in there and be like, girl, we need to... We need to get some makeup remover. You've been wearing the same eyeliner for four years. Mm -hmm. Just let me help you. Is it tattooed on, maybe? I don't know, but I just love her, and I want the best for her. Yeah, yeah, I get you. It's tough. It's time for Recommend Something, where we recommend, recommend something. something. For lunch, stop packing this extravagant dish. Start doing charcuterie boards for yourself, like a personal charcuterie box. That sounds... Way more complex no way. than like bringing a Tupperware with chili in it. No, no. You need like a baby bell cheese, some pepperoni sticks, or some lunch meat, some of those thin pretzels, some hummus, okay, you, maybe some grapes. Are you just explaining Lunchables right now? <laughs> yeah, that's a basically small what it is. Bar. It would be like <laughs> it would be like an adult version of Lunchables. It's so much fun to eat. You're like, what's next? You get excited about the next bite. What should I go with? Should I go with the grapes? Or should I go with the pretzels dipped in hummus? Some baby carrots? Listen, don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> I've tried it. I've had Lunchables before. It's not That's a just Lunchable. What you're, yeah, you're just saying Lunchables with grapes. So why don't you just bring grapes with your Lunchable and then you're fine. Whatever. Anyway, that's my recommendation. Highly recommend it. Uh, mine is food, re food related as well. I've heard of adults doing this, but I did it for the first time uh, over the weekend with my daughter where put your phone down upside down on the table. First person to look at it has to get the tip. Yes, face down. And it just led to a great conversation. Chatted the whole way through dinner. Like, uh -huh. it was awesome. At any moment, did you try and trick her yeah, to look oh, at her yeah. phone? Hey, do you know what time it is? Or Numerous <laughs> times, yeah. I'd even bring things up that I'd know she'd want to show me, <laughs> but uh, I couldn't get her. Anyway, so I ended up having to get the tip yeah. anyway, which is garbage. Classic. But That's highly a, recommend it. Yeah, instead of just doing it with adults, do it with your kids when you go out for dinner. Yeah, like if you have a 12-year-old who's fairly addicted to their phone like mm -hmm. I do, uh, it worked great. <laughs> Got a little tip for anybody who wants to get in a fight at a sporting event. Oh, good. Or concert. This Any... doesn't seem problematic at all. What's your tip? <laughs> Any big venue, really. <laughs> I watch a lot of fight videos online. It's your entire algorithm. Yeah. People fighting at a bus stop, humans versus animals in the wild. All of it. All of it. Uh, fast food fights. I see a lot of those oh, yeah. for some reason. I love when the like staff member is involved in wins mm -hmm. and they're just trying to do their job and then they end up in a fight and they win all oh, best anyway uh from studying all of these fight videos for a long time i've realized the person who is in the higher row always wins oh if you're in the stands at a sporting event yeah, okay so, i thought you meant like anywhere in the at the concession no it no, has no. to be in the stands this is in the stands but if a fight breaks out and you're in a lower row you're done just don't Get involved. Yeah. Don't run your mouth. Don't turn around and look up at yeah, a guy. You're losing your nose. Yeah, because the, the punching down guy yeah, yeah. always wins. Okay. Unless the lower guy is able to, like, grab pull up. and pull down. Pull down. Yeah. Anyway, don't fight at sporting events also. <laughs> the Ryder and Lisa Podcast. Play 107.